Welcome to Charterhouse. Charterhouse derives its name from the Carthusian Priory, founded in 1371 and until the dissolution. The Priory was replaced by an Elizabethan mansion and later, in 1611, became an almshouse and school. The school left in 1872, but the almshouse, now Sutton's Hospital in Charterhouse, still occupies the site and is the home of retired gentlemen. Bubonic plague reached London in 1349 and spread rapidly across the country. As the churchyards were quickly filled, new graveyards were required. The Bishop of London and a prominent courtier soldier, Sir Walter de Manny, bequeathed this plot to the city. The Black Death decimated life in London and it is estimated that between 30,000 to 50,000 souls are buried in this site. The gateway is part of the original entrance to the Priory, which was founded by de Manny and subsequent bishops of London who left a generous endowment. London Charter House was indeed the largest of the nine Carthusian houses in England with a prior, 24 monks and a dozen or more lay brothers. The great cloister consisted of 24 cells, actually two storey houses, each set in a garden and occupied by one monk. You can see the food hatch of cell B on the left, where food was placed, and the lower hatch for drainage, water being supplied to the cells. A plaque dedicated to Sir William Walworth, Mayor of London, a donor, instrumental in beheading Watt Tyler during the Peasants' Revolt. The Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Howard, in 1571 covered the cloister with brick vaulting, allowing players to walk under cover to the great tennis court he built at the end of the cloister. Master's Court is a polyglot of brick and stonework. Here the great hall windows and quatrefoils below the windows presumably were reused from the Priory. Washhouse Court, which you see now, was the residence of the lay brothers who provided the daily necessities for the monks. Here were the kitchen, cellars, storehouses, bakery, brewery. The stone ranges are the earliest part of the building with brickwork being added in 1531. The lay brothers also tended the gardens and the orchard. The chapel was the Priory Chapter House. Beyond the north side of the chapel, southwest of the great cloister, was used as a burial ground for the monks. Shown here is a print of Johannes Kipp's view of the Charter House of 1715 after Thomas Sutton had acquired the house in 1611. The present layout of Charter House is still very similar. The Great Chamber, a large impressive space, was created in its present form in the mid-1950s. Previously it had been a smaller room, occupying the western part of the range. Queen Elizabeth I held court in the room, described as the throne room, when she came to Charter House from Hatfield. James I used it also on reaching London in May 1603, when he created more than 80 knights here. Norfolk added the bay and installed the fireplace and the overmantel. 
The chamber was extensively damaged by fire in 1941. The present ceiling is a faithful reproduction made after the Second World War. The ceiling depicts the Howard family arms, those of the present Duke of Norfolk, Earl Marshal of England. The chamber is used for concerts and social gatherings. Hall dates from the building of Lord North's mansion in 1545. This magnificent room is used by the brothers at meal times. facade of the Great Hall. The west wall with its passageway to the offices and the main doorway now no longer used hides the kitchen. Here we see the great cloister wall, site of the monks cells. Changes noticeable in the brickwork being that of Thomas Howard's conversion of the great cloister known as the Queen's Walk. Henry VIII suppressed the priory in 1538 and then used the building for storing his hunting equipment. 1611 began a new era for Charterhouse, or Howard House, when Thomas Sutton purchased it from the Norfolks for £13,000 to become an almshouse for 80 poor gentlemen and a school for 40 foundation boys. Thomas Sutton, described as the wealthiest commoner in England, was a Lincolnshire man. He held the post of Master of Ordnance in the northern parts. His wealth was greatly increased by his advantageous property dealings and as a money lender. Sutton died in 1611 and the charity was entrusted to 16 governors who included the most powerful men of the land. Thomas Sutton was buried at Christ Church Newgate Street. In December 1614 his coffin was transferred with great pomp to the present chapel. His tomb was executed by the partnership of Nicholas Johnson Edmund Kinsman and Nicholas Stone, who were paid £400. On the altar tomb lies the recumbent effigy of Thomas Sutton, in a fur-lined cloak. Above are his Sutton arms. The Jacobean Chapel was extended northward to accommodate the brothers and the boys. The stained glass window was fitted in 1844 and it is by Charles Clutterbuck. It depicts the crucifixion. The plan shows Charterhouse with details of the monastic church and other buildings. Changes were made after a fire in 1671 by Sir Christopher Wren. However, these were later demolished to make way for new accommodation for the brothers in the 19th century. The present Master's Lodge is a substantial brick house 
built in 1716 for the physician, adapted later for the master's residence in the 1950s. The chapel cloister was created in 1614 by Francis Cantor to connect the chapel with the master's court buildings. The chapel is used for evening prayer Mondays to Saturdays and Holy Communion on Sunday and Holy Days when it is open to the public. As the school grew in popularity, the chapel was further extended northwards to facilitate the boys at services. Boys, being boys, carved their names into the woodwork. Here is one, Labar, a student who was later to, to become the preacher at Charterhouse. Pensioners Court reached through the archway in the northern range of Preacher's Court was the first part of the rebuilding to the designs of Redmond Pilkington and completed by Bloor in 1839. Here the brothers lived until evacuated during the Second World War to Godalming. New accommodation was found after refurbishing in the main building and Pensioner's Court is now occupied by private residents. Preacher's Court's spacious garden is flanked by the northern cloister which was blocked except for the principal archway during changes made after the Second World War. Charterhouse School moved to Godalming in Surrey in 1872 the premises were purchased by the Merchant Taylor Company for £13,000 and used for their school in 1933. This was the schoolmaster's house. Afterwards, St Bartholomew's Hospital purchased the site for its medical school and is here to this day. Here we see the extensive damage done in 1941 by incendiary bombs. It is remarkable when you look at the present building to realise what a most skilful and successful reconstitution Seeley and Paget made to the ruins to bring about the present structures. For instance, the great chamber with its paintings of bishops, the great staircase, all due to the work of Seely and Paget, without whose assistance Charterhouse may never have risen from the ashes. In the year 2000, a further scheme to erect new buildings over those demolished in Preacher's Court, known as the Admiral Ashmore Building, was completed and is now fully occupied. Bloor's Cloister Building of 1830, at present occupied by private residents, will soon be renovated into a new infirmary building when the block cloister will once more be opened. Thank you for your patience in watching our video. We hope that you will enjoy your visit to us.